<laughs> I have a few thank yous um, to start before I introduce our new, our new football coach. First, thank you to our Board of Regents for your faith and your support. President Nana, thank you for your wisdom, your insight, your patience, um, and your commitment as we navigated this transition. <clears throat> Randall Cunningham, thank you. We appreciate it very much. You set the standard. Michael Lombardi was also very helpful in this. And thank you to both of you, but thank you to all of our former letter winners and the staffs who set the foundation for our future success. To our current student athletes, you've given so much to this program. You gave me feedback on, your, on the head coach and what you were looking for in that candidate profile. We worked our absolute hardest to find a coach who embodied those characteristics. And like you, we found someone who is smart, who is tough and determined. <clears throat> our athletic department staff, your teamwork, your dedication, your willingness to go the extra mile truly inspires. Thank you. And a special thanks to Eric Nepomuceno, Megan Caligiri, Andy Grossman, Marcus Bowman, and John Gladchuk. Thank you for your insights and your work throughout this process. Finally, my family, thank you for your patience. Um, and Jackson Francois, you are the best researcher I know. <laughs> As soon as this is over, you are hustling back to school. Um, <laughs> it was a competitive marketplace. We set out to find a leader and a teacher with the competitive drive, the energy, the intellect, and the caring to lead our young men to success on the field, in the classroom, and in their futures. We evaluated, we vetted, and we interviewed many qualified candidates. However, throughout the process, we kept coming back to a quarterback I met in 1998 and whose career I followed from afar as he prepared himself for a role just like this. I remember speaking with my brother after an emotional game against San Jose, or that San Jose State played against the then number nine team in the country, TCU, with LaDainian Tomlinson and remarking to my brother about our quarterback's resiliency and leadership. I have seen his character firsthand. He has prepared for this role his whole career in positions of progressive leadership. He is a student and a teacher of the game, learning from some of the best, beginning with Coach Walsh and Coach Ralston. He knows the West, and is one of the country's best recruiters. He creates relationships with his student athletes that last well beyond their playing days. He has the character to lead, the energy and the will to build, and the passion to galvanize. He is supported in this journey by his wife, Kelly, herself a former Mountain West Conference student athlete, and their awesome daughter, Cruz. Please join me and giving a huge welcome to UNLV's new head coach, Marcus Arroyo. Athletic Director Lee Francois, President Vienna, for believing in me and giving me this uh, chance to lead your football team. 
I'd also like to thank the Board of Regents and the university for their support. Thank you to my wife, Kelly. She's a superstar. Being a coach's wife is really, really difficult, and no one's done it better. My daughter, Cruz, we're on a new adventure, baby. And you're going to love being in this community. You're going to love being a little rebel, which is halfway accomplished already. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a funny story. We're, we're, we're flying in uh, our first trip here to Vegas. Her first trip to Vegas is a lot different than my humble beginnings. Uh, I looked over to flying in the plane the other day. She's looking out the window at Vegas and looking at some of the sights and sounds. I remember about when I was her age, driving across from Northern California, a little town of 1,000 people, uh, in Colfax, all the way to Arizona, where my dad now lived. Uh, in the bench seat next to my brother and my dad of a 72 Primer El Camino listening to Bonnie Raitt and Santana. <laughs> Very different ride here at this time. Uh, my family, my in-laws uh, have been great, supportive coach this coaching journey from coast to coast the last 16 years. I can't thank them enough. Here we go. This is awesome. This is amazing. Wow. Last night I got a chance to meet these guys uh, for the first time. And, and I tell you, the most important part for me was they were my first meeting. Uh, alone, and it was amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm so fired up and preparing for this job, prepared for this job my whole life. Uh, the fact that I get to do it here at UNLV at this unique time in this community is amazing. Uh, my goal here is to build and develop a culture grounded in accountability and toughness. And I told them that last night. And those two things will be at the uh, at the forefront of everything we do and every decision we make. Uh, we have an important job to do with these young men, and uh, at this stage in our lives. And I plan to completely engage in that mission. As a staff, we'll be committed to helping them grow academically, athletically, and socially. And the expectations that for my staff will be set for it. Uh, I spoke to, uh, I spoke to uh, quite a few people in this process in regards to understanding uh, what exactly they believe that, that, that takes and, and what I need to build in, in, in a high character, low ego, high output groups, what I'm going to put forth with you guys. Okay? And those are the guys that will be set out in front to help you with those expectations. We take our academics process very seriously in this program. It's one aspect of the student-athlete's life that we can measure achievement and success year-round. It's different than football. We only get 12 opportunities to really be gauged, but your academic endeavors over the course of your career here can be measured throughout that, and that's important. Uh, athletically, I plan, to I plan to surround you with an outstanding coaching staff, great leaders that will push players, love our players, and support our players in every aspect of their collegiate level. Socially, we'll be here for them as they develop into a great human being during their college career. That's important to me. The human aspect will be the forefront of a lot of things we're going to do. Sitting down and developing as people, hearing their story, sharing ours, and getting to know each other. Uh, we'll guide them to make good decisions and represent their family and our football family in a manner everyone in the Rebel Nation can be proud of. Uh, Rebel Nation, we will win. We'll recruit at a really high level. Uh, the goal is to compete for championships. We'll block out the naysayers. Together as fans and city and administration and press, we'll do that. We'll build a winner, a winner that will last. The enthusiasm and passion in this community is contagious right now. It drew me to this job. I know the blueprint for success at UNLV, and I wanted this job from the, from the jump. I made it a point to come get it. I wanted to be here in a leadership role, and I can't wait to be with my team on an individual level and get to know them. Last night was the first step. I love just looking them in the eye shaking their hands, seeing their demeanor, and getting ready to hear their story. I gotta earn their trust, I gotta re-recruit the ones that are here, and recruit our, recruit our tails off for the ones that are. Uh, the 220, I told them this last night, the 2020 season for them started last night in our meeting. Their decisions at the end of finals here, moving into their break, will be a determining factor in our success in the first stage of this. Uh, I know they're excited, I know they're anxious, shoot so much. Uh, but that's the beauty of it all, the process of doing something amazing together. My belief is nothing's done or accomplished successfully alone or by myself. I recognize the significance in my life in this moment in time. I know the fight I'm in for, but I'm used to that. Similar battles have, have crossed my path my whole, whole career, and I've been involved in rebuilds since the jump. I'm ready. I'm thankful. I'm humbled. I'm excited. I can't wait to get to work. I can't wait to get from these guys again more and more. Excited, thankful. Go Rebels. I think we'll start with some questions. Yeah, I'm Mark Anderson, Las Vegas View Journal. 
the, the building you're standing in now, what kind of factor was that as far as your interest in this program? Uh, this is a huge factor. Um, I think that a lot of things that, that are going to give you a chance to be successful in, in today's landscape um, have to do with, number one, where, you're, where, where your feet are planted on the community uh, and where your feet are planted within your academic, where your feet are planted within your service of, of the school, and then obviously the building the kids get to be in the most. And this building is nothing short of amazing. I've walked it candidly about three times in the middle of the night, um, locked myself out a couple times too, and uh, <laughs> I've navigated how to get back in. Uh, it's not easy, so it's secure. Um, <laughs> but I've been in a lot of places. I've been in a lot of places coast to coast. I've been in uh, places that many would assume would be the, the uh, best of the best. This is nothing short of amazing. This is what will bring great athletes here. This is what drew me here. This is what uh, drew me in, in many ways, as you said here, was the ability to, to uh, bring kids here and, play, and, and be able to work in this environment. <laughs> uh, Alan Snow with LDSportsBiz.com. Hi. Um, would you have taken this job if Allegiant Stadium wasn't here and if this building wasn't here? Yes. I wanted this job. Um, I think the fruits of your labor present opportunities throughout the course of your career, and you pocket those. Um, but this one was different. This one came up and was a splash on the radar and was immediately something that I was drawn to for all the right reasons. The unique timing of this all, the timing with Reza Miena, time with athletic, athletic director Ree Francois, um, all the things that I've seen over the course of my career with great leaders um, made me understand what is needed and what's available, what, what it takes to be successful. And it just so happens we have a brand new stadium that's unbelievable. Um, I think it's great. I think that's going to be an added component to it. Hi, Coach. John Hi. Castanino with the Rebel Report. Hi, John. You mentioned, obviously, the community, and the community is, is transformational right now, not only in the sports realm, but just the community as a whole and its reputation globally. Uh, so not specifically talking about sports, but where do you and your program feel like you fit in in the transformation of the city? You know, I think that... Uh, I think you mentioned, you kind of hit some of the answers. I think just the vibrancy that's happening right now, you can feel it. It's, called, it's, it's contagious. I, I, a lot of people from afar view places that we coach in this world, athletic environments, as ways of such that they think they've got a, a feel for it. Until you get there, and unless you know the landscape, um, it's really hard to tell. When you land here, when I started asking people about this place, when I know the leaders that are behind it, and I start seeing facilities like this, and I started really putting putting uh, my ear to the pavement. It was very easy to see that the community was a huge aspect of why this place is, is going in the direction it's in. Um, it's eclectic. It's supportive. It's a sports town. It wants to be great. Uh, it's just really, really inviting. Uh, my family fits. That's a huge part of it. I mean, um, the ability for us to fit in a community. We're West Coast people. We're small town over California. We've been we lived everywhere on the coast. We live in big cities. And, We've come to this place right now and realize this fits us perfectly. And uh, this is this is an awesome opportunity and a great place that wants to be great. And I'm going to ask all hands on board. <coughs> Coach Chris Matthews, KLAS TV. How are you doing? Good. Can you kind of, you talked a little bit about that blueprint? There's so many coaches for the last 20 years that have come here and failed. All different sorts of offensive coordinators, legends, you know, hot shot A's, OCs, and so forth. What's kind of your blueprint? How, how will you succeed when all those others have failed? Yeah, I can't speak for everybody else. I think everyone in any program that I've been a part of uh, that has even touched a program has had a chance to make it some, has made it a little bit better. Um, and I think that, you know, some of the blueprint that I've had the, 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 the fortunate opportunity to, to be part of in regards to mentorship allows me to believe that the academic integrity, the social piece of it, the athletic excellence piece of it that I've learned from the, you know, Mario Cristobal's or the Mike Dundies or the Jeff Tedfords or the Dirt Cutters or the Dick Tomies or showing up at 18 and sitting in an office with John Ralston and seeing Bill Walsh come in and talk to him about being 10 and 10 at Sierra College at a ball boy. I mean, those things, those, those, those little pieces that I've taken along as far as developing a blueprint for success um, have all played into my belief in taking a place that is, that is this passionate about doing right and putting forth a great plan um, 
is just is, is, is just the, the perfect opportunity. I think that, that those opportunities, those experiences have put me in position to to make those decisions and, and put me in a leadership role that I think will uh, that'll help us. Kevin Bowling or Fox Five in the red zone straight at you. Uh, as an offensive background guy, what type of offense do you envision running here and will you have the players to implement that in year one or will it be a work in progress over the next couple of years? Yeah, I think that uh, my, bracket, my background's allowed me to kind of understand that um, you can sometimes believe, especially early in career, that you can pigeonhole yourself into what you believe exactly is right for your offense. And it's evolved over the years, and football has evolved over the years. I think what we've moved for in the most, most current role that I'm in is, is a football team that's physical, that's tough, um, that runs the football effectively, um, that relies on some things that make defenses uh, – have to work a little harder, tempo and, and things of that nature. Um, I think the play action element. I think that I think that all the things that we're doing most currently with what we're doing uh, on offense and what I believe in are things that give you a chance to be successful and, and really um, put yourself put your best foot forward offensively. Um, and, and obviously the the, the, uh, the guys that I believe we're going to put put in front of these young men to put them and lead them and teach them are going to have the same similar philosophy. Is what are you gonna what what pieces do we have that work and we're not gonna try to put a square peg in the round hole now. Um, we got to make sure we've got the elements that, that work or we've got to go recruit them. But it starts with these guys right here. Um, I know I'm smart enough to know right now we will win because of these gentlemen to start with. Um, they're in the building and they're gonna go to work right now and they they want to. They're hungry. I could sense that last night. I've done this long enough to know. I've been in their seats. I've been in their shoes. Um, but we're gonna be an exciting round of football that's tough and physical and and, and plays a, a an exciting round of football. Uh, Coach Jesse Merrick, uh, NBC Las Vegas. Right? I just, um, as you take over this program, what's top of the list for you on your to-do list? These guys. We recruit these guys. Make them understand my plan. Get to know them. Um, hire a staff, a great staff. And it might be in the building already. I got an opportunity to sit down with uh, these guys as soon as I get done here. I'm going to start sitting down with guys and start um, mulling things over. And then go out and find who I need to find, both as players and, and support staff and whatever we need to do. And and, and run that past my leaders and see if they support that. Um, that is the first and foremost. Mike Romano, Las Vegas Sun. Uh, when does the UNLV job start for you? And uh, with the Rose Bowl obviously coming up, how are you handling that transition? It started when we first started talking started then because I think that um, that's when you've got to be ready to really start thinking about it. You can't start thinking about something you, you, you want at the time you get off the plane or when you take that call. I mean, you're ready for that, you know, and I was prepared to take that call and I was ready for the opportunity to think about this thing um, before I had it and I was prepared for that. Um, this job started before I had it and I'm already in it. I'm already full, two feet, all the way in. Um, the Rose Bowl is an opportunity that I plan on being a part of, and that is ultra exciting for, for what we've done and the athletes that I've had a chance to be, be a part of. And, uh, and, and, and again, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's an awesome thing. But I, I'm, I'm locked in here, and, and I've been in full speed ahead since, since uh, we had this conversation about the opportunity. Good. Any questions? Thank you.